Live from KSAT 12, The Night Beat starts right now. Chaos and concern as firefighters got to work. Pet owners in San Antonio ended up right in the midst of the mayhem. We're going to hear from them coming up. Also, several backpack giveaways happening tomorrow. We have details on those events and the tax-free weekend coming up. But first... We start tonight with breaking news. A marathon standoff continues on the north side. San Antonio police trying to get a murder suspect out of an apartment for almost 48 hours now. This whole ordeal playing out at the Agora Stone Oak Apartments. The night team's Patty Santos is there with more on what's happening right now. 47 hours and counting, Patty. Yeah, it's been a long two days for officers working this, and it's been a quiet several hours. We can tell you that residents that live in the complex have been allowed to come in and out through this gate here, but the specific building where this is happening has been closed off to anybody coming in and out. In the last two days, police have talked to this suspect. They have asked him to come out several times. The suspect has been seen throwing out items out of the balcony. Now, the name that police are calling out is Sony Rojas, a man by that name, has a murder warrant out of DeWitt County. Now, SAPD has not confirmed that that is the man that is barricaded here. Police have been trying to convince the suspect to think about how his actions are impacting the people in this apartment complex, his children and family. And take a listen. This is just one example of what they're saying to him over the loudspeaker. And again, this all started Wednesday around 11 o'clock at night when police got a tip about the suspect being inside this apartment complex. Again, police are monitoring who's going in and out of this uh, complex. And Stefania, from my experience and probably from yours too, uh, standoffs don't usually last this long, but it seems that police here have a lot of patience and they're just waiting it out. We'll send it back to you. No, they don't last that long. Thank you, Patty. Hopefully they come to a resolution soon. Now, new details tonight from that fire that we told you about on the northwest side. Dog owners called to the chaotic scene as firefighters fought off flames at a building right next to a doggy daycare. At least 80 dogs had to be evacuated. This was on Rocky Point, not too far from De Zavala and I-10. The night team's Camelia Juarez spoke with dog owners and with the owners of Camp Bow Wow to find out what's going to happen with all those pets. I was super scared because my dog is like my child. A frantic scene as dog owners received a call for an emergency. The dogs were left at this camp Bow Wow on Rocky Point, but ended up at a print store across the street. Fire trucks, smoke were lining the streets. It seemed pretty chaotic when I went in there. Um, I think they're just doing their best to take care of the pups at the time, and there's so many of them. The chaos began when flames sparked up next to the doggy daycare. Firefighters fought flames at Clifford Power, a generator and battery store. They said they heard like a couple of big booms. They have quite a bit of motor oil and heavy batteries on scene. Most likely those were coming from batteries burning. San Antonio Fire spokesperson Joe Arrington says fortunately no one was injured, including all of the dogs. Camp Bow Wow says some of the dogs will be spending the night at other locations near the airport or near Stone Oak. They're really good at keeping their pup parents up to date on Facebook with messages. So I'm figuring they're just trying to get through today. And like, she, and like she said, you can get more updates on their Facebook page last week. Check. We didn't quite see one yet. And as for fire crews, they're set to be out here for a few more hours. And then after that, cleaning crews will come in because this entire street is covered with oil. Now, for the cause of the fire, we still don't know that yet. And we also don't know the amount of damage, how much this is going to cost this business. But when we learn that, we'll let you know. Camelia Juarez, Quesa 12 News. Camelia, thank you. And now let's talk about dangerous drought conditions that we're facing. We're going to show you some photos here. Those are flames near Wimberley. Firefighters as far as Montgomery County showing up there to help fight the Hermosa fire this week. Fire crews kept flames from reaching homes in that area. Hayes County Emergency Management says that they lifted evacuation orders tonight at 6 p.m., but firefighters there still fighting the flames. We know 60 acres have burned and it's 30 percent contained right now.
Now we're also getting new video from the Smoke Rider fire. The Lake Travis firefighters captured this video that you're looking at on Tuesday when the Smoke Rider fire jumped the highway. Look at that. The fire is near the Blanco and Hayes County lines. Crews are saying that flames spread to 1,200 acres. Right now it's 70% contained and firefighters think it's going to take another three days to finish containing it. And yet, here's another fire. This one's north of Fredericksburg. Crews are saying they know what caused this big sky fire. They say it was a mechanical malfunction. It's burned more than 1,400 acres. It's now 80% contained. It destroyed three barn fires. Okay, lots to talk about fires, and we can't keep talking about this without bringing in our good friend, meteorologist Justin Horn. So, Justin, the city of Fredericksburg says the weather here is a huge factor. It's why it's so hard for them to determine when that fire is going to be contained. So talk to us about that and how the winds are playing into all this. Sure, the gusty winds last couple days have been a big issue. That's what's driving these fires along, of course, with the dry fuels that we have out there. Everything is so dry and crunchy. The forecast fire danger for Friday, it, it's still in the moderate category, uh, if not high in some spots. But I think we're going to start to see this come down some. And as we get into tomorrow, the fire danger subsides even a little bit more because we're going to see more humidity. Plus. We have some rain chances, 20% chance coming up tomorrow, some small chances Sunday and Monday, and another shot Thursday. All of this helps those firefighters fighting these fires right now. That's good. Thank you, Justin. Now we're going to turn to our economy and the workforce. Yes, we all know prices are up, but so are the number of new jobs. The Bureau of Labor Statistics says that the U.S. economy regained all the jobs that it lost in the pandemic. Now, here in our area, we saw 47,000 new jobs over the past year. But one restaurant owner says that she still had trouble hiring cooks for her kitchen. Priscilla Caballero says that now she's going to hold off on hiring until business picks up. And she's hoping the economy gets better, too. I think it's tough. I think it's really hard. I personally, when I go out with my family, I see businesses a lot slower than they normally are, and I see it in our business as well. And Caballero is hopeful that more customers are going to come in once school starts. We certainly hope things pick up for her, too. With rising prices, more parents are looking to take advantage of the tax-free weekend. You're going to save about $8 for every $100 that you spend on things like school supplies and clothes. We went to the Pica Pica Plaza on the south side and we spoke with shop owners there. And some of them say that they plan to have sales on backpacks. I'm going to have like a 15% sales uh, mostly on the handbags and the backpacks. They want to animate backpacks. Um, I have them at a lower price so they can get them for their kids for school. Okay, so here's some other tips for you to consider if you're buying at those big box stores. You should stop the st you should shop the store brands to get a cheaper price. Also compare those prices to the prices that you see online because you might actually save a couple bucks by ordering online and you can also save on those taxes too if you order on the net. Now, there are several other giveaways that we want to tell you about, too, tomorrow. There's one at the Seguin Wave Pool from noon to 2 p.m. Seguin police are also giving out free haircuts. Now, here in San Antonio, Last Chance Ministries, it's hosting its own giveaway. It's preparing all those backpacks for that event happening tomorrow at Rosedale Park from noon to 4 p.m. That's on at 303 Dartmouth Street. If you want more information, you call 210-227-4451. And we're not done because we've also posted other giveaways on KSAT social media pages and on KSAT.com. The Spurs, for example, giving away supplies at the AT&T Center on Sunday. That's from noon to four. And you can read all about it on KSAT.com. OK, so if you're looking to donate supplies, you can help the Southwest Independent School District. You can drop off any supplies that you have at the Walmart off of Loop 410 and Ray Ellison Boulevard from 8 in the morning to 2 in the afternoon tomorrow. And all of your donations are going to go to help students. So it's going to a great cause. Of course, our coverage on this damaging drought continues. It's more than just fires. They're also posing another issue for homeowners. What a foundation expert says that you need to know in order to protect your property. Also, school hasn't started yet, but a group of students celebrating a graduation today. The training that's meant to help other teens as they head back to class. Those stories and more next on The Night Beat.
Happening tomorrow, a fallen service member is going to return home to New Braunfels. Midshipman Second Class Luke Gabriel Byrd was with the U.S. Naval Academy, and he died after falling during a hike in Chile last month. He was participating in a semester abroad program at the Arturo Pratt Naval Academy. Tomorrow's procession is going to start at 8.30 in the morning through the New, New Braunfels and then go to the Zoller Funeral Home on Landa Street. You know, the pandemic has highlighted a lot of challenges, and one of those is how we take care of our mental health. Well, now a group of San Antonio students are trained to help themselves and their friends. 11 students took part in the first ever teen mental health first aid training this week, and they graduated today. They help recognize and respond to those challenges and connect students with a trusted adult. Elika Danica Arispe says that she's confident that this kind of training is going to help her and her friends succeed. We're put under a lot of stress academically, and so all of the mental health resources I find that I can use um, to just help guide myself and my friends as well. So that type of training comes after a data from a San Antonio survey showed that teens often turn to each other before they turn to other adults. The Center for Healthcare Service Foundation, along with Project Worth and San Antonio Youth Commission, all made this training possible. All right, let's go back to the heat, because while the drought is pushing all of us to the brink, it's also hurting the foundation of your home. Not what you want to hear, I know, but we got to tell you. The night team's Patty Santos talks to a foundation specialist to find out how to avoid trouble. The heat may be causing a shift under your feet and all around your home. That's a pretty severe crack right there. That is absolutely a pretty severe crack. I mean, it goes from top to bottom. So that's that's probably been some long term movement that more than likely wasn't addressed. Paul White with Foundation Support Specialist says his company has answered 1000 more calls this year so far than last year. The biggest um, problem with foundations is, is the, the retraction of the clay soil. Cracks near the windows, tiles and even separating door frames and floors are all examples of what homeowners are seeing, ignoring it could cost you more, he says. Your house is sitting on something that is possibly moving. And so if, if you just pay attention to your house, pay attention to the, to the outside, to the walls, um, and, and it, it's going to speak to you and tell you exactly what's going on. Brad Harrell with Harrell Commercial Plumbing says there's other problems that could follow. So you have slabs shifting, and um, then you have drain pipes that will break and then you'll have sewage going underneath the house, which is another main issue in and around this area. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. So companies are offering free inspections and free estimates. So get multiple bids but when you do a foundation inspection. It's best to do it early because, as you just heard from Patty, those problems can multiply. And in the end, it's going to end up costing you more. We don't want that. The dry weather also impacting a tradition for college graduates in San Marcos. Texas State University documented the tradition of graduates jumping into the San Marcos River on Twitter several years ago. You saw it. And now the university is urging graduates not to dive or flip in the water. That's because the water level at the San Marcos River is low. So anybody who jumps in could also get hurt. Right now they're discouraging that tradition. All right. So what do we got to do? Just stick to dry activities? Here's one that you could do this weekend. The Al Alamo live shot over there right now. Sky 12 showing us that nice picture. 86 degrees now. Now let's talk about the weekend, Justin. Yeah, the drought causing so many issues. Those last two stories just, just goes to show you how bad things are getting. We need some rain so desperately. There is a chance. We do have a chance for tomorrow. Uh, about a 20% chance here in San Antonio. First, we start with today's high. We got up to 100 again. 100 here in San Antonio, 102 Hondo. It was 103 in Pleasanton, 106 in Cotula. Another brutally hot day. We add to our list now 56 days this year, 100 or above. We are now just one day shy of tying that second place there in 2011, 2009. We're closing in on that too. We've got some more 100 degree days in the forecast, but maybe not tomorrow. Because we get clouds and because we have moisture in the forecast, that should keep temperatures 
below 100. Some good news there. Time lapse shows we had a few clouds today. In fact, the clouds really worked in this evening. We had one lone shower on the city's northeast side. It died down pretty quickly. 87 degrees right now. South southeasterly winds at about 11 miles per hour and dew points are starting to jump up again. Dew points in the mid 60s now after falling into the 50s a little bit earlier. But I'll point out the dew points are in the 70s as you go east of San Antonio. That's where the air is really thick. And we did see quite a bit of rain around Houston today. And that kept temperatures down there. So we're hoping that that cloud cover and moisture works in our direction and does the same for us tomorrow. Right now we're at 87 degrees at the airport, 84 Kerrville, still in the 90s for Del Rio and Carrizo Springs, 93 degrees there. And a little closer look at Bear County, mostly in the mid 80s this evening. It's warm and again, somewhat sticky out there. I want to show you the big picture using water vapor, and this gives us a really good idea of what's going on. A ridge of high pressure sitting over Colorado and New Mexico and then the rotation around it is allowing a few disturbances to roll in from the east. It's just far enough north now to where it opens the door just a little bit to get some disturbances in here. Now it's still a battle. We still got some sinking air with this, so the rain is not going to be as widespread as what it was around Houston or New Orleans earlier this week, but at least we have a chance. And you look at the satellite radar right now, we've got some showers out in the Gulf of Mexico, but not much. Here's what our forecast looks like. As we fast forward into tomorrow afternoon, Isolated showers and storms, about a 20% chance. It's all we can give you, but at least it'll be uh, across the area. I think uh, everyone has at least a shot at a downpour. And then as we get into Sunday, still could see a few isolated storms during the afternoon on Sunday evening. So something to watch, 10% chance. We're not done with the rain chances tomorrow. There, there's some more shots down the road. And when we talk about the rain chances tomorrow, I do think there's actually a little better chance as you get closer to the coast, about a 30% chance there. Everyone else. 20% chance. Temperatures stay below 100, as I mentioned. 96 the forecast high tomorrow. We'll warn, we'll warn you, though, a little more humidity means heat indices will be still around 100, if not a little bit higher. 91 Fair Oaks Ranch, 96 in Elmendorf tomorrow, 97 the high in Floresville. Your extended forecast, we go 99 on Sunday, 10% chance of rain. Still a 10% chance on Monday, 99. We're back into the triple digits Tuesday and Wednesday. A little bit of a pattern shift on Thursday gives us uh, another opportunity for maybe a few isolated showers and storms and brings temperatures below 100, which is good to see. So there's a little bit of a pattern shift here and we'll take it. We'll take it. Yep. All right. And you know who's been avoiding it for the last two weeks? Our friend Greg Simmons right now. He's going to join <laughs> us from Ventura, yeah. California. All right. So you spoke with the big man, Dak Prescott. What do you tell you? Yeah, yeah, very lucky to be able to do that. And I'll tell you, give you a little update here. We're in Ventura, the town of Ventura, and they closed off the streets here. They started doing this during COVID. It became so popular, they kept doing it. So speaking of popular, so is Dak Prescott with the Dallas Cowboys and their fans. And yes, he was nice enough to grant us a one-on-one -on -one interview. In a moment, you'll see a preview of that. It will air on instant replay and how the bar has been raised in Cowboys camp coming up. Camping with KSAT, powered by Davis Law Firm. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our live coverage of the Dallas Cowboys training camp coming to you tonight from the town of Ventura, just north of Oxnard, where today the Cowboys held just a walkthrough, getting ready for a full pad throwdown tomorrow in front of one of their largest crowds in Oxnard. Now, Dak Prescott is about to start his seventh season in the NFL, coming off quite the year where he threw for almost 4,500 yards, scored 37 touchdowns with 10 interceptions. And unlike last year, he comes into this year's camp with no restrictions. He looked great connecting on deep balls along with short routes on a daily basis. Coming up this Sunday night on Instant Replay, we go one-on-one -on -one with Dak Prescott, who covers a number of topics from dealing with the frustrating loss in the first round of the playoffs to the optimism he has for this year's team. How does it feel to come into camp just knowing there's nothing that's holding you back. There's no restrictions. There's no thoughts about what you can or can't do. Yeah, I feel like we need to knock on some wood. Um, <laughs> but it's a right. But it's a, it's a blessing, honestly, to to feel as uh, as well as I do. To feel in the best shape of my life. Um, and as you said, no, no injuries, no restrictions. Uh, I just get to focus on re what really matters, and that's my teammates. That's just coming out here trying to be the best each and every day with these guys and grow and continue to build on uh, something that we had going last year, but we need to take that step. You talked about your 29th trip around the sun being the golden 
year and you wanted to lead to a golden moment. What were you visualizing when you said that? Yeah, I mean, playing playing that last game at the end of the year in February um, in Arizona, and that 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 would be a golden time, and that would be golden for uh, myself, this team, this organization, and so many fans out there. And um, as I said, but we've got to focus on now, and we've got to focus on what we can control, and that's getting better daily. You know. Mike McCarthy, your head coach, said the fact that defense wins championships, but the Super Bowl is won by the quarterback. Did you understand what he was saying about that, and do you agree? Yeah, 100% I understand and agree. And as he said, defense wins championships. They'll get you there to get you those moments. But when you're there, the quarterback's going to be asked to make some throws and to make some plays that um, that are unusual, I guess, or that you have to step up and be consistent in that game and uh, go win that game. And so that's, that's a moment I'm looking forward to and an opportunity I'm just trying to make sure that we can get to. Is this the team that can get you there? Great, right? So see the rest of it all on Instant Replay Sunday night at 11 o'clock right after the night beat. Number 51, Anthony Barr on the field for the first time since signing a one-year contract to play for the Dallas Cowboys. As after spending the previous eight seasons with the Minnesota Vikings, he became an unrestricted free agent after last season in Minnesota where he scored a career-high three interceptions in 11 games after missing the first four games following a neat procedure. Four-time pro bowler chose the Cowboys because he feels they are contenders. It didn't hurt that his former defensive coordinator, George Edwards, is a senior defensive assistant in Dallas. Well, obviously, I got some connections with uh, George Edwards uh, being in Minnesota. You know, we were, got real close um, while I was out there and we had some good success. Um, and I've heard nothing but great things about DQ, um, how he operates. And you know, I think Dallas is a contender and I want to be on a team that I felt I had a chance to win. Um, I want an opportunity to play, uh, play at a high level, and I'm excited to be here. There you go. While the Cowboys train in the cool summer breeze of California, the Texans are sweating down the heat and humidity that has gripped Texas in August. Considering the Texans have a 1,000-yard one, a 1, running back in the last five seasons, that's one major aspect of the Texans game that must improve. Former Colt Marlon Mack has joined the running back room with guys like Rex Burkhead and rookie Damian Pierce, but has only had 28 regular season carries since tearing his Achilles in week one of the 2020 season. Where is he now physically since his injury? I definitely feel like I'm there again. Uh, just last year, like once again, I didn't get that chance to show myself. But uh, in the few games that I did, I, I felt that confidence in myself. But now I actually got to just go out there and do it again, once again. But I feel good, man. Every day I'm showing that explosiveness. I feel it in my cuts. And every day I just keep going out there to keep doing it. All right, we'll see how it works out. Can a senior wide receiver at UTSA match or do better than he did last season? Coming up. Like the UTSA Roadrunners, wide receiver Sakari Franklin will have a tough time matching his performance last year in his senior season this season. Franklin is a big reason why the Roadrunners went 12-5 and last year and won their first ever Conference USA Championship after setting a new single-season record with 81 receptions, 1,027 yards receiving, averaging 79 yards a game with 12 touchdowns, earning him first-team All-Conference USA honors. But for Franklin, does it feel different this year? Yeah, I do feel it's like it's different. Um, knowing that we got that first championship under our belt, knowing that everybody's going to be coming after us, um, we're going to have to work a little harder this year. So we know that, and we've been doing that every day. It's like we're being hunted now, but um, we're going to keep working and keep getting better every day. You now remember the Roadrunners kick off their season September the 3rd in the Alamo Dome against Houston. That is one week after the KSAP Pigskin Classic 2022, presented by your San Antonio area Chevy dealers. It should be a great week of football, starting with high school and ending in college. And what do you think of our setup here, Stephania, right here on the streets of Ventura? It's almost like a city or town trapped in the 50s, but we love it. Live yeah. in Ventura, Greg Simmons, KSAP 12 Sports. Looks sweet. You should take go around, take some pictures, eat some good food. It looks like fun there. I was telling Justin that too i was like Ooh, there's that a restaurant <laughs> restaurant with our name on it right there <laughs> Ooh, nice all right tell me all about it when you come back on monday all right we'll be right back after this you hungry because you might be after that restauranters in mexico city celebrated the annual torta fair with that 242 foot sandwich it just took two minutes and three seconds to make, weighed in at over 1,700 pounds. If pork, beef, and chicken weren't enough, they also added buffalo, crocodile, ostrich, and venison. Wow. Now visitors were able to take just a little piece home for $1.50. Would you try it, Justin? 
Mm. I don't know how sanitary. You know what? I'd be curious. I'd want to <laughs> see what it tastes like. All right. Yeah. Well, that does it for the night beat. Don't forget that good morning. San Antonio starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow. Have a wonderful night. Please stay cool. Take care of yourselves. Enjoy the weekend.